From Hollywood, the NBC Theater presents... Screen Directors Guild Assignment. Production, Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Director, Alfred Hitchcock. Star, Robert Montgomery. This is the Screen Directors Guild presentation of a comedy of marriage, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, starring Robert Montgomery and introducing the director of the film, Alfred Hitchcock. Like every other art, the motion picture has developed its own popular catchphrases of evaluation and criticism. One of these is the Hitchcock touch. The Hitchcock touch is more than an artist's signature. It represents the highest pitch of the screen director's art, an indelible impression of the director's unique talents upon the other ingredients of the film. And now it is with pride that the NBC Theater presents the screen director of Mr. and Mrs. Smith, and such other unforgettable pictures as Rebecca, Shadow of a Doubt, Spellbound, Notorious, and Rope. Ladies and gentlemen, Alfred Hitchcock. Thank you very much. It would seem that after a decade of directing motion pictures in this country, I have become associated with that emotional skyrocket, Suspense. So perhaps I should warn you that tonight, suspense has been suspended. I must confess to several attempts to scare the daylights out of an audience, or at least to tie their nerves into pretty little knots. But in Mr. and Mrs. Smith, we reversed ourselves and turned to comedy. So don't bother sitting on the edge of your chair. It might strain your diaphragm if you feel a giggle coming on. (laughs) Now we give you Mr. and Mrs. David Smith, a family with a formula. A couple with a constitution, a set of rules for a successful marriage. There has just been a domestic battle between the Smiths. Right now, handsome David Smith is reclining on the bathroom floor, his head pillowed on the bathroom scales. Anne Smith is brandishing a razor at her husband's throat. Mrs. Smith is shaving Mr. Smith. That's right. Mrs. Smith is shaving Mr. Smith, and they are both feeling very smug about the latest success of domestic diplomacy. Oh, easy with that razor, Anne. You look like five of the men who mutinied on the bounty. Oh, I'm late for work. Now hold still. Oh, oh. Oh, sorry. You realize that I've been away from the office three solid days? I know, but we had to keep our main rule. You are forbidden to leave the apartment after a quarrel unless you've made up. Yes. If every married couple had that rule, there'd never be a divorce. No one would ever get down to the office, either. (laughs) We've got respect for each other, David. Yep, that's our big trick. Mm. David. Uh Uh-huh. We're very happy, aren't we? Well, what do you expect me to say at the point of a razor? (laughs) David, if you had it to do all over again, would you marry me? Uh Uh-oh. Remember rule seven. Be frank and honest with each other at all times. Well, uh, frankly and honestly, if I had it to do all over again, uh, uh, put that razor down a minute, will you? Thanks. I wouldn't marry you. (laughs) What? Well, a man gives up so much freedom and privacy and independence when he gets... Oh, now your feelings are hurt. Oh, no. No, it's perfectly all right. So can I get up now and go to work? Of course, David, if you want your freedom. I just want you to get up off my chest, darling. I don't want to cling to my husband if I'm not wanted. And I do want you. I love you. I'm crazy about you. I'm used to you. Oh, if my only hold on you is that you're used to me. Darling, you're my little girl and I'm frantic about you. Now forgive me. Say you forgive me. Oh, come on. Say you forgive me. I forgive you. Well, give me a kiss. Now, can I get up and go back to work? Morning, Jeff. Well, good morning, David. 
Glad to see I have a partner in the law business again. You've been out three days this time. Well, you know how Ann is, Jeff. You don't have to apologize to me, David. I envy you from the bottom of my heart. Yeah, she's a good kid. Oh, well, there's a little guy named Diva waiting for you in your office. Diva, Diva, Diva. Never heard of him unless it's uh, Danny Diva. They hung him in the morning, didn't they? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, well, I'll go right in and talk to him. Hi there, Mr. Diva. Uh, Good morning. Mr. Smith, I take it. Yeah, yeah. What can I do for you, Mr. Deaver? Uh, well, uh, Beecham is on the other side of the river. It is? Say that again, will you? Well, Beecham is on the other side of the river. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> yes, but it was always incorporated in Brender County, which is in Idaho. You follow me? Yes, we're in Idaho. Go on. Yeah. Well, we in Beecham found out that we belong in Nevada. Yes. So anybody who got married in 1946 with an Idaho license... Yes. ...like you did... Oh. Well, they aren't really married. Oh, they aren't? Oh, oh, you really are married and everything, but the Chamber of Commerce figured if everybody got married all over again, it'd be better. (laughs) That's pretty funny. And so, here's your two dollars back. Now, you can use it to get another license. Well, now, that's very square of you boys in Beecham. I... You just get married again, that's all. Oh. Well, I've got to be on my round. Uh, good morning, Mr. Smith. Goodbye, Mr. Deaver. Thanks a lot. Oh, no, no, no. Not at all. Thank you. Yeah. Hmm. Mrs. David Smith. Now, Miss Ann Krausmeyer. Hmm. <laughs> <coughs> Uh, Miss Albright, get me my home, please. Little Annie Krausmeyer, my favorite date. Mmm. And with Beecham on the other side of the river, Mrs. Smith, that makes us in Nevada, not Idaho. So the marriage isn't legal. Not legal? But for three years... Oh, oh, it's it's nothing serious, Mrs. Smith. Oh, no, just a matter for the vice squad, that's all. (laughs) Please, please, Mrs. Smith. Stop calling me Mrs. Smith, as though that makes a good woman out of me. All you do is get married again and everything. Hmm? I explained it all to your husband. Oh, oh, then David knows about it, too. Spoke to him an hour ago. Well, why didn't he tell me about it when he telephoned? Well, you see... Oh, oh, yes, of course. That's why he invited me to Mama Lucy's restaurant. Yes. That's where he proposed to me three years ago. Oh. He's going to ask me again tonight. <laughs> He's a dear. Well, just so he isn't a stag. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. oh, Mr. Deaver. <laughs> Oh, he'll ask me tonight. He'd better ask me tonight. (laughs) It's a lovely dinner, isn't it, David, dear? Going up in price since three years ago. Yeah, well, some things haven't. I mean, like postage. Yeah, airmail just went up to six cents. Well, yes, but I mean, like, Permits and licenses and stuff. Yeah, fine, if you own a dog. David. Now, don't nag me about buying a dog again, dear, no. (sighs) David. Yeah? Where are we going to go after this? Home. Well, um, aren't we supposed to do something before we go home? Nope. Just go home. Oh. (sighs) Oh, uh, what happened at the office today? Anything new? Exciting, unusual? Same old routine, same old palava. Yakety, 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 yakety. That's all. That's all. That does it. That does it. Anne. You know we're not married. Annie, the public. You were just going to go through life with me with that silly, oh, what I know about us expression on your stupid face. Put down that champagne bottle. I was going to tell you later. Back home and without getting married, sure. Annie, everybody is If you don't leave me alone, I'll call the police. Annie, for heaven's sake. Help, please. Annie, great Scott. This man is molesting me. Help. Annie, Help! oh, for crying Help! out. Annie. Well? Remember me? Libertine. Brought you flowers. Eat them. Ow! Oh, <laughs> by doze. You broke by doze. By doze is bleeding. Hey, 
Ed, open this door at once. Ed, Ed, Eddie! Anne. Stop following You're me. my wife. We are not married. All right, we'll get married. Does that suit you? That's a nice, snarling proposal. Well, I wouldn't have you. What's the matter with me? Name one thing about me you don't like. Oh, my, aren't we vain? One thing I am not is vain. Oh? What about that tar stuff you kept rubbing in your hair that smelled up the bedroom? I was only trying to keep my hair for you. Well, keep it for yourself. I've got hair. Oh. <laughs> now, beat it before I call the police. Now, you see here, Annie. Help! Police! Annie. Measure! Annie. Measure! Public nuisance! Oh, Annie. Measure! David, as your friend, as well as your law partner... Yeah, yeah, I know. I'll catch up on my work, Jeff. Don't worry. It's not that, Dave. Uh, I'll want you to drop into your own apartment tonight for dinner. I'll be there. You? What for? Well, Anne is fond of me, and I'm fond of her. I think I can get this thing straightened out, Dave. What, Jeff? What, Jeff, you're the, you're the best friend a fellow ever had. We're partners, aren't we? You're the best partner a fellow ever had. We were schoolmates, David. Yes, and you were the greatest halfback that Alabama ever had. You... you mean that, Dave? I used to think that Hinkle was the greatest, but Hinkle couldn't lay a hand on you. Uh, thank you, David boy. Thank you. Hello, Ann. Come in, David. Ann, I want to tell you here and now how sorry I am Talk about... Talk to my lawyer. Lawyer? What lawyer? Hiya, Jeff. Ann has asked me to represent her in this case, Dave. She what? Asked him to represent me. She doesn't really need a lawyer, you know. Well, then you ought to do fine. <laughs> uh, Dave, as a lawyer yourself, you know that Ann may halt this relationship between you at any time and marry someone else. As in the case of Peterson versus Peterson, Adams versus Adams, and Gimble versus New Pennsylvania Coal Company. Stabbed. Now, David Boy. That's dirty tennis. David, I'm asking Ann here in your presence if she'll think of me as a possible someone else to succeed you, David. Oh, that's very sweet of you, Jeff. You know I've always been fond of you. Thank you, Ann. I shall regard that as encouragement. Oh, Jeff. That settles it. Goodbye, Ann. Oh, goodbye, Dave. And you, Jeff Custer, comparing yourself to Hinkle as a football player. You couldn't even wring out Hinkle's sweatshirt. Goodbye. <laughs> And darling. Oh, yes, Jeff. Great news. My mother and dad have just come up from Alabama. They want to meet you. Meet me? But I'm a Yankee. When they see you, they'll forgive you. <laughs> meet us all in our office in 30 minutes. And, oh, Anne. Yes? You know that daring, rather low-cut dress of yours? Yes. Don't wear it. Oh. Goodbye. Goodbye, y'all. <laughs> So, you are my boy's fiance. Well, yeah. <gasps> Those lovely Confederate gray eyes. <laughs> well, thank y'all. <laughs> Any of your family from the South, Miss Krausmeyer? Uh, well, uh, no. Oh? Uh, but an ancestor of mine deserted from the Union Army. <laughs> <laughs> Many Northerners saw it that way. <laughs> yes, I commend him quite highly. Uh, son, this young lady will do. Uh, Jeff, my secretary tells me that... Uh, oh, am I interrupting something, Jeff? Mother, father, David Smith, my partner. How I do. <laughs> Happy to know a partner of Jefferson, sir. And this is Anne Krausmeyer, Jeff's fiance. We've met, I think. Fiance? And I was just about to suggest a boat trip for Anne and Jeff to New Orleans. Boat trip? Oh, but, but, but Anne isn't a very good sailor, I know. 
I tell you what, though, Jeff. If she gets sick on the boat, you put her to bed and put a hot water bottle on her stomach and hold it there. Hold it there? No, no matter how she hollers, you hold it there. Never oh. failed with us, did it, Ann? <laughs> David fancies himself quite the doctor. <laughs> yes, and by the way, Ann, what does my laundry come back? I'm out of shorts. Shorts? His running shorts, Mrs. Custer. Every morning, David runs five miles. Runs? He's a Yankee, all right. <laughs> uh, Ann sort of took care of David's things around the house, Mother. Yes, best little housekeeper you ever saw. And let me tell you something. I know of no finer compliment than this. When I've been sitting across the breakfast table for a woman for three years and still want to marry her, that girl has something. Well! Uh, Jefferson, may I see you all in private? Why, uh, certainly, Father. Uh, in this other office. Come along, Mother. Sit. Come along. David Smith, I hope you're satisfied making those two fine old people miserable. Well, what about me being unhappy? You're always thinking of yourself. Why can't you be like Jeff? Because I can't climb trees. Oh. <laughs> Jeff is so kind and considerate and, and gentle. Since and... when are you so crazy about the gentle act? Do you recall how I grew this scar on my forehead? You threw a bed lamp at me. I was out for three days. That's only because you'd been out for two nights. Very funny. <laughs> it's all right, Anne. I'll explain the entire situation in quick order. We understand completely, Anne. And we want you and Jeff to visit us at Lake Placid next week. Lake Placid? Oh, I'd love it. Thank you. As for this northern lawyer... Well, Mr. Custer, is it my fault that I'm related on my mother's side to General Sherman? General Sherman? Yee-hoo! Father! You are listening to the Screen Directors Guild production of Mr. and Mrs. Smith, starring Robert Montgomery with Mary Jane Croft, and introducing the director of the film, Mr. Alfred Hitchcock. Bye. Bye. Thanks for driving us up here, boys. We'll telephone the hotel if we need you. All right, Mr. Custer. Oh, oh this air is so invigorating. Whew. Wonderful. Uh, there's our cabin, Anne. Oh, it's large, isn't it? Uh, there are three suites altogether. Three suites in a unit. Oh, I see. You'll find your suite quite comfortable, I trust. They're uh, adjoining, but not connecting. Oh, dear proper Jeff. Hey, maybe there'll be some time for skiing before it gets dark, huh? Oh, Jeff. Who's that coming out of the suite on the other side of my suite? The devil. It's David. The same thing. Oh, he's ill. Look, he's staggering. He'll fall down the steps. David, you'll fall. Oh. oh. He did. David. David. Uh, yeah. There, that gets him in bed. Oh, here, help me get these wet clothes off him. Why, Anne. Oh. We'll go away the first two weeks in December. What's he talking about? Oh, we were going to come up here the first two weeks in December. Delirium. You'll be crazy about it, Anne. Oh, he's been up here all week torturing himself. Well, come on, help me get him undressed. Anne! Well, I'm his wife. Come on. Look out! Huh? Don't fall now. Oh, you see, he thinks we're skiing. Oh, all right, now, come on, off with his clothing. Watch out there! Never try to pass a tree on both sides at once. <laughs> He's so sick. Is that a rattle? I don't know. I wish I could hear it again. <laughs> He's just clearing his throat. Oh, he looks awful. He could do with a shave. I'll shave him. You will? I always shaved him. I'll find his shaving stuff in this bag here. Just a minute, Anne. Huh? He's asleep now. Oh, poor boy. Let's go next door to your rooms. I want to talk to you very seriously. And 
So that's my position, Anne. I love you, and I want to marry you. But I'm not sure that you're not still in love with David. Uh, perhaps you'd better think about your promise to marry me, Anne, for your sake. Jeff, I don't think a person ever existed who was as fine and generous as you are. I'm thinking of your happiness, Anne. You're very sweet. Now I better have a look and see how David's doing. Don't wake him up. Well, I'll just have a look through his window. I'll be back in a minute, darling. Oh, the beast! The scheming, trick beast! I'll murder him for this. I'll have his heart out. You! Anne. Sitting up in bed, sucking on oranges, smoking cigarettes. And, and, and put down that lamp. Pretending you came here on a heartbroken bender, the big sympathy act. And I love you. Put down that lamp, and you love me, and I won't give you up. I won't let you marry that heap of southern fried chicken. I love Jeff, and he loves me, and don't you call him fried chicken. You're not going to get married. We are going to get married. You can't. What kind of a combination is fried chicken and calves' brain? You! Well, all right, all right. I've done all I could to win you back because I wanted you back. I've neglected my work and lost clients, and now I'm through. Washed up. Go on, marry the guy. I hope you'll be very happy. And may all your children be, be, be dietitians. Oh, you... <laughs> Jeff, I can't help worrying about David. He really does love me. Now he'll take to drinking. Or he'll find someone else, Anne. Oh, no, no. I'm afraid he'll ruin a brilliant career on account of me. If I could only make him hate me, despise me, if I could disillusion him somehow, if I could make him think that I... Yes, Jeff. You go back to your suite. And whatever you hear in here, don't, don't do a thing. What are you going to do, Anne? The walls are paper thin. He could hear everything. If, if I pretended you were still here and, well, not the gentleman that you are. Oh, I understand. Yes. This is a mighty fine thing you're doing for a man. Uh, yeah. Well, now go out, but don't make a sound. Good night, Anne. Okay, good night. Good night. Good night. Well... Here goes. Oh, Jeff! No! Oh, Jeff, you were always such a gentleman! No! Oh, no, not Jeff, don't. No, no, I said, don't, no, no! Oh, Jeff. Oh, oh Jeff, you're so strong. I never realized you were so, oh, no! Jeff! No, 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 Jeff, no, no, Jeff, now, look, now, if you don't behave, I'll have to ask you to leave. No, 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 please, 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 Jeff, Jeff, Jeff! Oh, oh, Jeff. Oh, no, what would your coach at Alabama think if he knew? Oh. All right. All right, Jeff, put her down, you big hunk of, you hunk of... David Smith, I you for busting in like this. I see. Well, there's just one way of handling you, and that's rough. Let go of me, you northern lawyer. You're coming home with me. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, Jeff. Jeff, help. S-O-S. Jeff, help. Help. And David, come to your senses, <sighs> both of them. <sighs> Hit him. Hit him, Jeff. Let him have it. Murderize the bum. Well, start murderizing. David, I'll forgive you. Oh. For heaven's sake. Well, would you respect me more if I knocked him down, Anne? Would I? Why, you big hunk of southern fried chicken. What? I'll bet your mother was scared by a magnolia blossom. No. Now get out of here before I forget I'm a lady. The well, lady says be so kindly as to scram, Jefferson. <laughs> Gladly. And what a narrow escape I've had. Your slip is showing. <laughs> I'm getting out of this Clam bake. Chicken fry. Chicken fry. Hey. Hey, what are you doing with the skis? The sleigh service is discontinued after 10 at night. Well, spend the night here. Not on your life. Okay, okay. Here, let me uh, fasten your skis for you. No, it's, it's, it's all right. It's all done. Now. All set to go? One side, please. One moment. Get your hands off of me. A gentle, firm pressure yeah, on hey, the shoulders quit, like quit this. Hey, quit shoving. Hey! 
may easily upset a skier and render him or her helpless. Pull me out of this chair. You hear me? Mm hmm. What are you what are you going to do? <laughs> I warn you, I'll kill you in cold blood. <laughs> Some night when you're fast asleep, I'll shut up. At breakfast there'll be ground glass and I said shut up. I'll say I was cleaning my gun when accidentally mm -hmm. I'll even say yes I oh, David <laughs> <laughs> The NBC Theater has presented the Screen Directors Guild production of Mr. and Mrs. Smith, starring Robert Montgomery with Mary Jane Croft, and introducing Alfred Hitchcock, the director of the film. Next week, the NBC Theater brings you the scintillating comedy Hired Wife, starring Rosalind Russell, and presenting screen director William Siter. And now, here again are tonight's stars, Robert Montgomery and Mary Jane Croft, and screen director Alfred Hitchcock. Ladies and gentlemen, as well as being a fine actor, Mr. Montgomery is also a screen director. You are about to hear the clash of great minds as two directors face each other across a microphone. Hello, Bob. Hello, Hitch. <laughs> well? Well, what? Why aren't you going to talk shop? Shop? Whatever you're talking about, Mary Jane. Well, you're both directors, aren't you? Mary Jane, Alfred Hitchcock is more than a director. He's a... He's a force, a state of mind. A state of mind? Have you ever seen a state of mind with a 92 and three-quarter inch waist <laughs> measurement? <laughs> well, you know, there's one thing bothering me about our radio version of Mr. and Mrs. Smith. It, uh, it didn't have the Hitchcock trademark, did it, Mr. Montgomery? You know, that's right. Hitch, you can't place yourself in a radio scene the way you do in a picture just to identify the Hitchcock product. Ah, that's where you're wrong. Do you remember the sound of shaving in the first scene? Yeah. Oh, when I was supposed to be shaving, Mr. Montgomery? Yes. Well, when the sound man made that noise, those were my whiskers being screamed. <laughs> ah, the Hitchcock touch. <laughs> good night, Hitch, Mary Jane. Good, good night. night. Good night. Good night. And good night to you, Robert Montgomery, Mary Jane Croft, and Alfred Hitchcock. <laughs> Tonight's cast included Carlton Young, Verna Felton, Pat McGeehan, and Dink Trout. Mr. and Mrs. Smith was adapted for radio by Milton Geiger, and original music was composed and conducted by Henry Russell. Production was under the supervision of Howard Wiley, associate producer Bill Karn. Your announcer has been Frank Barton. Mr. and Mrs. Smith was produced by RKO, producers of the Technicolor production The Boy with Green Hair, starring Pat O'Brien... Robert Ryan, Barbara Hale, and Dean Stockwell as the boy. Robert Montgomery may currently be seen in the Warner Brothers production, June Bride. Soon to be released is Alfred Hitchcock's new picture, <laughs> Under Capricorn, starring Ingrid Bergman and Joseph Cotton. Listen again next week when the NBC Theater presents... Screen Directors Guild Assignment. Production, Hired Wife. Director, William Siter. Star, Rosalind Russell. <laughs> The Screen Directors Guild program came to you from Hollywood. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.